In this video, I'll show you how you can add snow to any scene in Blender. First, we'll add a base layer of snow and optimize it a bit. Then we'll move on to making a realistic snow material, adding some frost, and finally look at adding falling snow. First, the base snow. For this, we'll be using the real snow add-on, which is just included in Blender by default. So enable it, and it should appear in the side menu. Then just select the object you want snow on and click Add Snow. I found that in a lot of cases, the snow is clipping through the object a bit. So to fix that, go to the sculpt mode and touch it up a bit. Also, while we're here, we can add some more variation and randomness to make the snow look more realistic. But before we do, we have to fix the brush settings. So just enable the View Normal and Occlusion checkboxes, and that will prevent the brush from affecting both sides of the snow. So now we can sculpt it without a problem. While doing so, I suggest looking at some references of snow buildup to be able to better match it to reality. Another way you can add randomness is a displacement modifier with a cloud texture and the direction set to Z. For this scene, that's the way I added variation to the ground snow. And speaking of, if you have tried to add snow to the whole ground using the real snow add-on, then Blender will most likely have locked up on you or just crashed on you. So what you can do instead is to only add the real snow close to the camera and use a different method that I'm going to show you shortly for the distant parts of the scene. The way to do that is to go to the edit mode, select the parts of the ground you want the real snow on, go back to object mode and checking selected faces in the add-on. Now if you press add snow, it will only edit where you're selected. By the way, as a side note, this select faces thing is also very useful if you want to add snow to the tops of tree branches. Because then you can just select the face that points upwards, press shift G and click normal, which will then only select the faces that point the direction of the pre-selected face. Then to tweak the amount of snow, tweak the threshold of the select similar effect, as well as the snow coverage and height and the real snow add-on. But anyway, back to the ground snow, because now we have a lot of ground without it. So to fix that, just duplicate the ground itself, move it up a bit and give it a new material that later we're gonna replace with the actual snow material. Then delete it from the parts of the scene where no snow should be. Oh, and if you use the displacement modifier trick for randomness, then you'll have to add the same setup to the lower rest snow as well and switch the coordinates of both modifiers to global. Okay, last thing before we move on to the snow material. Below the trees, I recommend moving the snow down a bit to make it look like less snow reached the ground in those places, because that's just something I saw in the references. But now onto the snow material. And this is gonna be very simple. Just add a principled PSDF, give it a white color and some subsurface scattering. And we don't want it to look like skin, so give it a radius of 111 as well. Now to add more detail to the snow, add this setup here for the bump and this one here for that glittery snow sparkle. Then just apply the material to all the snow in the scene. And that's done, but it isn't really looking that realistic yet because we are missing something very important. Frost and more built up snow that kind of got stuck in the creases and crevices of the objects. But before we add that, really quick, if you want your renders to go from this to this, this to this or this to this, then check out my procedural film emulation node group for the Blender Compositor. It's available for just $1 on my Gumroad and I personally use it on every render I do. So if that sounds interesting, check it out. But now back to the frost, because here you can choose from three different ways to make the effect based on the situation. The first one is to use the normal output of a geometry node and pass it through a separate XYZ. Then using the Z output as the top mask to mix in some white into the base color. This is the technique that I used for most of the house and the tree trunks. The second one is to just use the diffuse texture to mix in some white into itself. I use this for the tree leaves or needles and also the ground. Lastly, the third method is just the first one, but additionally using an ambient occlusion node to remove snow from areas it can't reach. And this I only used for the porch of the house. Of course, for all of these, you can use color rims to adjust them further. But all right, that's done. So now we can move on to the falling snow. To make the actual snowflake, just add an icosphere, reduce the subdivisions and give it the snow material we created earlier. Then to make it fall from the sky, add a plane and move it high up so it's not visible to the camera. Then add a particle system and increase the particle amount. Afterwards, give them a long lifetime and select the icosphere as the instance object. Now they're probably too big. So reduce the scale until they are about one to two centimeters and give them some scale randomness. By default, they will fall way too fast. So give them some drag and damp to slow them down and some brownian to make them fall kind of swirly. Here are my settings if you want to copy them. Now, if you bake the particles and look at them, you may notice that they kind of go perfectly straight down like this. And maybe that's what you want and like that. But if not, feel free to add a wind force field to make the snow float sideways. And that's the snow done. But I do still have one little bonus tip left. After rendering, give the scene a slightly blue color grade because I found that really helped with selling the, I guess, coldness of the scene. But that's it. If this video helped you at all, then please consider subscribing or check out this video next.